Are you going to sit up tonight with me? It's not looking good. No? Why not? It's still very cold outside. I did say I was going to shoot some more winter targets this year. So it's January 16th. Have not imaged once yet this year. Not even once. It's been so cloudy and then Yes, was it yesterday or the day before? It was actually clear, but it was like minus 25 plus super windy. So tonight will be the first imaging night of 2024. I totally understand why people wouldn't be into astrophotography this month. It is just, it's no fun being outside. It's a tough month to be an astrophotographer. So the plan is tonight to capture the Rosette Nebula and I'll just shoot it without a filter in broadband true color. So a full natural looking image of the Rosette Nebula. Now, if you've shot this target before, maybe you did it in narrow band, you isolated some of those gases for a really dynamic looking image, but maybe you didn't take broadband natural looking stars. So that's something I've been doing a lot lately is capturing some image data just to apply the real stars to a narrow band project. And that's where I'm at with this one. I felt like that was a good use of my limited clear sky time tonight to capture the rosette in RGB. So if you're working on this project as well, hopefully I have a few tips for you of how to apply those RGB stars to the narrow band project and hopefully it's useful to you. So based on image scale and uh, the field of view and the size of this object, I'm thinking about using this rig tonight, which is the Esprit 100 at 550 millimeters. And then that'll be on the EQ6. And then the, the camera, the camera will be the ASI 2400 MC Pro, a one shot color, full frame. So this rig is coming outside and uh, yeah, it's gonna be I'm gonna be some cold fingers tonight. What are you doing? The old green coat's coming out for this one. Oh, this this over here, this is exciting. This is a big box right here. That came in uh, two days ago. I'm gonna let you guess what's in there. It's not. Uh, it's too cold to play with that right now, but I am excited to try that out. So the thing about this garage is. The rear garage door is, is amazing, right? For, for unloading gear. So it's just a short trip over from the scope outside. Problem is the only source of heat in here, which I've said before, is the heated floors. These tiles are heated. And with that door open, the cold air just rushes in here and then it will take hours for it to get back to room temperature in here again. So I have to have a plan of attack for opening that door and getting everything out within like 10 seconds and closing it back up or else uh, like my computer is in here. This is my office. So you can imagine how cold it gets in here with that door open when it's minus like 15 outside. So I'll get everything right up next to the door to move it all as quick as possible. You see, even the six R's are heavy, man. Two counter weights. And the Esprit 100 is the heaviest 100 millimeter retractor going. It's, I swear, it's twice as heavy as it needs to be. All right, I can set up the guide scope on there. Where is it? Oh. Move some stuff around. So we need to take this guide scope off of the gear 115 and put that on the Esprit 100. Just a simple one screw hanging that guy on there. So that's not too bad. Bada bing. Yeah, so in the winter, the more assembled your entire rig is before you get outside, the better. It's just not kind to the hands out there. Even if you're totally bundled up, you need your hands for some of this stuff. So that's good to go. Okay, so the big stuff is ready. I just need to grab everything else. Power cords, the uh, all the cables, the ASI air, all of that. But a lot of it is out here already. Let's just pile it up there. So the one extra cable that this one needs, because I'm using the ASI air to control the uh, EQ6 and not the AM5, it needs that adapter cable that uh, the EQ mod cable that I've shared several times uh, to control the mount. So that's an important one to have for this setup. I've almost got everything in here now, so I'm going to drag it all outside. I'm always amazed at how much I have to use this thing. I, I can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, like that loop gripper just to get things unthreaded. 
This is the adapter from the field corrector on the Esprit 100. And this was my filter drawer and it was just completely seized up and tightened. So I got to use this to take it off. Super handy, get yourself one of these. Because I'm just going after those natural star colors tonight, I already have that really punchy narrowband data to play with. I'm just gonna focus on capturing quality images. They're gonna be relatively short, about two minutes each in natural broadband RGB. That's about as long as I wanna go, maybe three minutes under this light polluted sky with a little bit of moonlight too. So that should be a good starting point and hopefully we get a few hours worth of data to play with and get some good quality shots of the rosette. It's still not completely dark out yet, so I'm just here in Stellarium getting a preview for my field of view with the telescope I'm using on the Rosette Nebula. So you can see the moon and Jupiter out tonight and Rudy standing there in the yard. And I'll just fast forward time a little bit and we can see Orion coming up there. And then just to the left of it, you'll see the Rosette Nebula. Now there's a really cool star cluster embedded within the Rosette Nebula. So there's a good reason to shoot it in broadband and capture those natural star colors. It looks like we're pretty well, okay, so we're set on the Radiant 61 field of view here at, what's that, 275. We'll switch that to the Skywatcher Esprit 100. So that would be the field of view if we're using a crop sensor camera, but I'm using a full frame. So it's even bigger, so it fits in there just perfectly. So I'll be capturing the Rosette Nebula with room to spare and some of that surrounding nebulosity as well. And it's a good match for the images I've already taken in narrow band of the Rosette, and then I'll have to layer those in together to build my image. But we're looking really good in terms of field of view for our target. Okay, what we have here is the narrow band version of the Rosette Nebula I captured last year through a different telescope. The uh, narrow band filter data has been combined into this SHO version with the stars. And then this file here is the new broadband data I captured last night on the Rosette Nebula. Obviously, the nebula itself is way less, is more faint but it does have those natural star colors in there. So I've done a few things to this image already, some vibrance and some saturation to make those star colors really pop before we do this process. I will say just for the sake of this video, uh, it would be over an hour long to go through everything I've done here. So I've put it in the image processing guide. There's a link to it in the, the description. If you already have the guide, it's free to get the latest version. So that's the long version of this, but I'll explain what I've done here quickly. So the big thing to do here for combining image sets taken through different telescopes, uh, different image scales, different filters, everything, is to use this star alignment tool in PixInsight. PixInsight is where we are right now, if I hadn't already mentioned that. So this has a really great tool for uh, aligning these images called star alignment. So we have our reference image that we need to pick here. So we're gonna choose the SHL version the punchy narrowband version. And then we're gonna add files and we'll choose our RGB image over here. So it's gonna align those frames up. Now, ideally you would do this. I'm gonna hit the circle here. It's gonna do an apply global and create a new image. Ideally you would do this with image sets that were captured at the same focal length, same framing. So there wasn't a whole lot of overlapping 
and uh, it makes the most sense to just use the same scope to capture your broadband and your narrowband. Not the case here. I, it was an afterthought to add these RGB stars to my uh, original narrowband project. So it's finished there and there's gonna be a new file created uh, with an underscore R. So this is it. This is where we can see the mismatch between our image frames. That's okay, we still got the core of the nebula there. We can do some creative cropping to get it to work. So that now we have these two image files that are, if we laid them on top of each other, would be a perfect match, which is great for our next step because we want to put those colored stars on the narrowband version. As you can imagine, the next step is to remove the stars from both images so we can kind of swap them out. So for this narrowband version here, I'm gonna use my favorite star removal tool, which is Star Exterminator. Now this is a paid plugin for PixInsight from RC Astro, Russ Croman. Uh, worth every penny, if you ask me, it does the best job at star removal. Uh, and not only is it gonna remove the stars, but it's gonna generate this star image for us of just the stars uh, that we can, in this case, we're not gonna use these stars, but we need that starless image. On the flip side for the RGB version, we are gonna want just the stars. So to run that, it's as simple as making sure these two check boxes are there, hitting the square button. And I'll check back in when this is done because it takes a few minutes. Okay, we've got our starless version of the narrowband version of the Rosette Nebula. And I've also run Star Exterminator on the broadband version of the Rosette Nebula to pull out those stars. So we won't be using this version of the image, the starless version of the RGB image at all. We just wanted those stars and we'll apply them to the narrowband version. So if we look at the star image here, this is the, these are the RGB stars. You can see the yellow warm stars and the cooler blue stars, everything looking good there. And that's what we'll apply to the starless layer. And we'll do that in Photoshop. So if we open up Photoshop, we'll open up our starless version, narrowband. Perfect. And now if we open up those RGB stars, we'll know that they are perfectly aligned because we ran that star alignment process on them. So I can open this up. I'll just select all, copy it, and paste in place. So if we play with the opacity slider here, you can see that those are exactly lined up where they should be, which is really important with a nebula with an embedded open star cluster in the center. We really wanna showcase those stars. So this layer over top, the best way that I have found, and others do this, to apply these stars is to change the blend mode. So just in the uh, drop down menu here from normal, we'll go to screen. Now, already it's pretty natural looking. You can really see the areas where the stars have disappeared, so we'll have to crop that, as I said. But these are the natural broadband stars in a narrow band image. So, all, the, all of this behind the scenes work to go that extra mile for, for an incredible image and incredible presentation. So there's a few things you can do from here. Um, as you can see through, through this screen mode, they've lost a little bit of their luster, a little bit of their color. So you can go into Adobe Camera Raw and make some adjustments to just these stars here and we'll see the impact that that has. So some easy ones, just like boosting the saturation and vibrance. Now it may look really, really aggressive here from this view, but rest assured when we're back into the image, it's much, much less pronounced than it is here. So even just doing that and we'll say, okay. So if we look at it, now we're seeing some pretty spot on colors for the orange and blue stars in the nebula here. So if I just go back and forth from that last change we made, I'd say that's a good change. And, and you can do that to taste, of course, but that's essentially how you blend a starless narrowband image with broadband stars using PixInsight, Photoshop, and Star Exterminator. So as I said again, the full version of this, it's over an hour long video, is in my image processing guide if you really wanna dig into the details of this process.